Welcome to the build log number 9 video. In this video, the printer finally has a name. I wanted to show you the capabilities with this printer with a strong structural frame, what you can expect at higher speeds. This piece here I've downloaded from Thingiverse, it's just a vibration or ringing uh, test cube. So looking at this surface here, you can see the letter X uh, embedded within the surface. And if I tilt this in the light, you'll see that the letter X and even the corners of the cube aren't rippling uh, down the walls. I mean, you, you'll see some other pattern there, but that's something else in the printer that I'll have to tweak, either tighten the belts or loosen the belts or something or other, but just feeling that, that's perfectly smooth. So uh, there's no ripple on that direction. Moving across to the Y axis, you can see again, I've still got that very faint um, uh, ripple, probably to do with the belts not being tight enough, but looking at the corners and the letter Y, there's basically no ripple there. Moving to the next direction, so this is back on the X, but on the rear side, you can see again in those uh, those uh, dimples within the walls are not rippling down the part. And finally, the fourth side, so this is the Y axis again, there is no rippling from those, uh, those dimples in the wall. So this was printed very fast, 80 millimeters a second, and that's a testament to what a structural a uh, frame like this can do uh, when printing quite fast. Can you hear the new fan on my E3D version 6 spinning? Much, much quieter than the old fan. I've replaced the 30mm fan uh, on the heatsink of this E3D with uh, one I've purchased from Jcard, the local electronics distributor. Uh, this is the old fan that I had on there. I ended up having to change this because I accidentally shoved a screwdriver through the fan while it was spinning and snapped one of the blades off. So I needed to replace the fan there and then because you know, it was vibrating so badly after that. Um, but it's so much quieter. This new fan is way quieter than the uh, E3D fan that's supplied with this hot end. Now, uh, this, this particular fan that's supplied is 10 millimeters deep, while the replacement is only 6 millimeters deep. So it potentially means there's, there's maybe not as much airflow being pushed over the heatsink of the hot end, but so far I'm not encountering any issues, and I, I can still feel the breeze um, blowing past the fins, and just uh, touching the fins during a print, they're, they're not getting hot on the hot end, so I'm assuming that this is adequate uh, to cool down the hot end. So. That is something that I've been wanting to do anyway for such a long time and because I've you know, broken the old fan, it basically made, uh, enforced me to do it and I'm so glad I've made that change. It seems like forever, but I've finally done it. I've installed the uh, induction sensor onto the new E3D Bowden mount on this 3D printer. So I've redesigned this part to allow uh, like a clip to be uh, screwed to the side of the uh, Bowden mount itself. So now the induction sensor is on fairly solid, solidly. Now that I've installed the induction sensor, uh, that also means I no longer need my Z-axis end stop. In fact, if I pan back, turn to where the X stop should be, Gonski, it's not there. Either is the, uh, the adjustment screw, I've taken that off the, uh, the bed as well. And if I pan back over here, here they are. So you'll see, I've, I don't need the Z-axis end stop or the Z-axis uh, adjustment uh, anymore because I'm now just using the induction sensor uh, in lieu of the Z-axis micro switch end stop. And it's working very well for me. I must admit, uh, now that I've switched over to this method of homing uh, the hot end to the bed, I am hooked. It is so much easier now not having to adjust 
the end stop with the screw, uh, being able to just send G29 as the uh, G code before the print starts, so it does its uh, its homing routine on the bed before before doing the print. The, the, the prints stick down so much better now. In fact, uh, I'm so comfortable with the way that this now works. I've increased the first layer uh, print speed uh, from 20, millim 20 millimeters a second to 30 millimeters a second because it just works so well. I originally had the sensor mounted on the left hand side of the E30 Bowden mount and I quickly realised that the left hand side unfortunately wouldn't be ideal. Uh, to start off with the uh, induction sensor was hitting the left XY motor when the X axis had homed so there just wasn't enough of a gap in there to allow the induction sensor to fit between the Bowden mount and the and the motor, uh, and also because the sensor, the induction sensor, wasn't actually touching the bed, so you'd need to go into Marlin and set a safe homing position, which was, you know, a bit cumbersome. So I ended up switching the induction sensor to the right-hand side. And just looking at the ramps board for the induction sensor, you can see the two resistors I've uh, installed here. That's the voltage divider. That's to reduce the voltage of the signal uh, from 12 volts, which is powering the induction sensor, uh, down to about 5 volts. Uh, and there's just that one wire going across to the end stop location. So that this one signal wire is going to the Z minimum uh, end stop, and that's triggering the homing for the Z axis. Still waiting for Banggood to deliver me the longer lead screw and also the bag of T-slot nuts so I can uh, finish this build, but uh, that's not stop stopping me from printing. It seems to print just fine in its current state uh, as it is. It just means I'm losing 50 millimeters of height here. So in the interim, I've uh, cleaned up some of the wiring. I've, uh, I've surrounded all the cables with this spiral cable management and cable tied that to the frame so you can see uh, from the heat bed I've got the uh, temperature sensor and the power wires, the end stop uh, of the Y axis and this motor over here is all spiraled through this cable management, uh, cable tied to the frame and then uh, obviously the ramps board still not mounted onto the frame of course because I'm still waiting for uh, for some more T-slot um, uh, nuts to be able to make a mount, so that'll have to come at a later stage. Uh, you'll see, following this uh, cable management loom, uh, is going up to the uh, hot end itself, so uh, the, the hot end, the thermocouple, the, the fan, the end stop, all those wires are, are nicely uh, loomed within, within that spiral cable management, same as the motor on the left is also uh, in the cable management, uh, cable tied to the frame over here and over here and and the extruder motor is also uh, within the cable management so uh, obviously when I, when I can move uh, this uh, horizontal extrusion down I'll be able to cable tie it all properly but uh, it's made a, a marked improvement in just the aesthetics of the printer uh, I'm not going to get tangled up in wires at least uh, around the front anymore because it's it's so much cleaner, there's just less clutter and uh, yeah, it's looking much neater. Uh, yeah, so I still need to obviously uh, ca cable tie the rest of these cables up. I'll do that when I finally uh, can mount the ramps board to the frame, which should hopefully be next week when everything arrives. And I've finally finished printing all the replacement parts in the blue PETG. Uh, so much better having uh, all the parts one color. In this case, they're all this, this, this kind of navy or dark blue. To be honest, I got a bit sick of the purple. Uh, and also, looking at, for example, the uh, left uh, XY motor, get that to focus, you'll see there's no sagging there. It's perfectly straight. Uh, this particular motor, if I push this back, it's, it's resting on the part uh, in there. So I, I don't need a block down here to stop the motor from, from wiggling as such, because it's, it's already resting on the part, which is thick enough to touch the, uh, the inside of the motor there. So, uh, that's the one on the left. The one on the right, if I zoom into that, you'll see is perfectly flat as well. So the PETG is working just fine uh, for this printer. So now that I've printed all the pieces uh, in PETG, I'm quite happy now to release the files. The printer uh, seems to be working very well. Um, it doesn't seem to be uh, inhibited by the lack of uh, T-slot nuts and, and fixings on, on the Z-axis, for example. So I'll be releasing the STL files on Thingiverse uh, very shortly after this video goes live. Enjoy. Uh, if you do make one of these printers, 
I wouldn't mind you uh, posting an I made one on Thingiverse because I want to see what, what you guys do with this. I know there's been a lot of comments about you want to print this uh, particular, sorry, print, you want to make this particular frame much bigger than what it is now. So uh, some people have been suggesting, you know, one meter tall and, you know, 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters, which is a very large uh, uh, frame compared to the one I've got here. So I wouldn't mind seeing some photos if you do end up making one of that size.